Lottie and Margaret, and we bought a van for 2,000 USD and converted it for 4,000 USD and traveled Europe with our cat Millie. We also make these ridiculous powerful electric bikes like you've never seen before. Our base is in Czech Republic, where we made our workshop at a junkyard, renovated it from scrap material, and turned it into a full-on studio. We customize and 3D print just about everything, and now we are on a new mission. Make the best possible camper van with no imagination limits and see what we end up with. We have so, so much to do this week, as you can see from our list. However, the most fun one is the very last thing, which is testing out our RGB lights that we have been dying to install. I'll admit, a huge reason that we wanted the RGB lights is because they look cool. But another excuse we can use is that having lighting that can change colors is actually a massive benefit. For example, when you're camping outside and maybe you want to keep all of the windows and the doors open in the evening, you would want to use like a pink or an orange LED light because that won't attract the bugs. Red light in the bedroom is notorious for helping increase melatonin that can help you sleep a little bit better. And blue light, of course, is known for productivity. So we have a huge list of reasons why we're excited to install this, but also we kind of want a dance party. In the previous episode of this season, episode 11, we had asked you what feedback you have about our videos, the things you liked and the things you didn't like, and holy cow, you guys came through. I went through every single comment in a previous video section. It's amazing, thank you very much. I agree with 90% of opinions and the remaining 10% as just a personal preference. So thank you so much for the feedback. We learned so much what you like and what you don't. Awesome. Awesome. What set people apart were cat shots, and we figured out why. It's because cats are so polarizing. You either love them or hate them. For all of you who don't like cats, we can be time stamp cat time <laughs> remaining. <laughs> Holy cow, that was fast. <laughs> that was a mocha. Just hey. one more, just one more to go. Not a one done. Just one mo. You can see what I made here. It's a pretty simple setup. I, if I break it down, then like I said, I'm running under floor two different branches. One is left driver's wing and the other is passenger wing. And I have them combined together and just a connector for jQuery. I have a ground bar here listed in a parts list together with a fuse box. So negative goes here, positive goes here. I crimped connectors. And then I'm just crimping connectors and looking at the appliances, what draw they have. And based on that, I'm choosing fuses. And all the positives are protected with fuses, all the negatives right here. This is just a controller for the roof actuators. So what it can do, it can remotely take a signal and reverse polarity on the motors, on the actuators. That means they go up or down based on where positive and negative goes. These I have prepped only for the RGBs, which will be along the whole ceiling. Two different branches, it'll be the front and the back. This is another part of the van that so many people forget about, and that is the smaller panel that is directly above the side door. Now, we're not only using this as kind of another tech hub to hold a lot of our electricity and our fuses, but it's also a place in the van that's always visible from all of your seating. So what do you wanna see all of the time? A clock, maybe the weather, 
different temperatures, whether that's outside or inside of the van, some speakers. In our last van, we even had a small mirror up there. This is such a useful place, and it's never in the way of anything, which is the best part. This is a good first step, just cutting this panel. It's beautiful how easily this plywood curves. And now I'm ready to cut the hole, the opening. I think I'm gonna keep this one openable like this, so I can actually have display and buttons in this particular door open it and have access to everything servicing maintenance fuse box all of the jazz this is riveted it fits well it can be fabriced right after i cut this This plywood is super cool how forgiving and flexy it is. Now I have two cutouts for the speakers which will be amazing for the, all the leisure, camping, music listening. And this cutout is probably this much bigger to have extra space for extra fuse boxes or maybe some extra devices I might be adding later on. The door I'm not gonna be making yet because that's gonna have some switches and LCD for the power bank and I'm not even sure what I'm gonna be using in there yet. Did I hear a kitten? Kitten! Time to go shopping. We're getting here switch and LTE router for the camera system. We're gonna have that system online once we get a SIM card and then we'll be always checking what's going on around the van. Head to our favorite restaurant in the city. It's a vegan vegetarian type spot. Czech is very meat and potatoes and we're more on the vegetarian vegan conscious cycle of eating. So I'm ready to dig in. I'm re just by the sight of this. Kind of a buffet that you just choose whatever you want, they scale it and you go for it. <laughs> Never seen anything similar. Oh, mm -hmm. it's such an interesting taste. I love this. I would like to share a few details what I've been putzing with past few days. It's a technical stuff, so if you don't like that, just feel free to skip this section. This thing seriously completely fried my head yesterday. I walked away from it thinking it's too difficult for me. Always, every single time Pavel comes or Margaret comes and I'm able to explain what I'm struggling with, that's always the way I realize what the core of the problem is. Now it seems to be easier, <laughs> but this is two polarity switch and I'm switching between two power sources. One is a car battery, the other one is the leisure battery. And I'm switching between, look, now it's off and it works only on an ignition. And on the other hand, I can switch it to the other power source, turn it off and radio stays on, you know. That's absolutely must because we can be using the radio with the Bluetooth and the speakers and a subwoofer anytime when we are parking somewhere. I love it. This took me a while to sort out how the wires go and a principle not to burn anything. <laughs> I can be switching between a different power source for the camera input. And if you remember how I installed the camera for the gray water outtake, this is motorized. It's right here finished as well, so 
you probably didn't hear that, but it's a sound of opening valve. And if I had any water in there, it would start flushing out. And this way with a camera, it's the most badass system because <laughs> I also have a LED there to give me some light at night and I can park exactly on the top of a canal or dump station. <laughs> This is extra switch for the reversing extra light that we have on the top. I'm only missing subwoofer and speakers. And then I can finalize it with my 3D printed frame and be done with this forever. Now we're unpacking the router that we bought in town that will get us Wi-Fi inside of our camper van. As sad as it is to admit, but we are not able to live sustainably off grid without staying connected most of the time. And that's not just because of work or banking or money, which are already great reasons, but also because we're dependent upon our phones for routes, to find grocery stores, for safe parking, to source water. And in the past, we've sadly had to leave camping spots early or not even be able to properly stay overnight because we couldn't get connected. So this time around, we're making sure that our Wi-Fi is strong, we have a good antenna, and that we will rarely be without internet. Spoiled. This is super cool that I have a use for this converter, 12 volt to 24 volt. One more time. This time it's for this PoE switch powering all the security cameras and I can just convert it from 12 volts to 24. So let's see, now I have a voltmeter. So look at that. I can be tweaking the screw here and adjusting the voltage on an output. It's obviously a little bit exchanged for inefficiency, but because I have such a big power bank and this the inefficiency is so small for the draw, that it's not even worth running extra system of 24 volt system. Instead, I'm using all these little converters only when they are needed. 24 volts, here we go. And this unit is set up. everyone. I've been so, so sick the last few days. I don't know if it's food poisoning from the fair or what, but I feel like I've been hit by a train. So Lottie has been stepping up and doing everything here at the workshop. He was a little off for a few days too, but it's more up here for him and mine is definitely more physical. So I am just in awe of how things are coming along. Look at this beauty. Oh, that curve. Oh, that looks sexy. Ooh. It's getting a shape. You wanna see the side distance look? Mm. Very happy, this is turning into reality and uh, immediately moving on with another panel. This template, that is tweaked, that fits nicely and I'm gonna make it a reality right now. Now we have this, two pieces. I think that was my kind of a mistake ordering different sheet size, those squared. But I'm mining it anyways, and I think this might turn beneficial because all of the pump equipment will be on this mm -hmm. and a piping going under. So actually taking the whole panel with uh, water system out might turn out to be a benefit, but maybe it's just an excuse. Hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Water system gonna be mounted right here in no time. 
Was this part 100% necessary behind the kitchen? This, yeah. I realized, look, when we have this this part, that's the back of the bike. Yeah. And then the wheel goes somewhere here. Uh, then I would pretty much be cutting something like this out. Yeah. Which might be what? Not even kilo. But I can still, I think I'm going to do the whole thing. And eventually, if I bothered about this, cut it out later. Okay. Makes sense. talked so much about our goal of this week being paneling up the entire van so we didn't see any more of the insulation or the silver. We decided to go with another lightweight plywood for the garage instead of using the recycled plastic that we've used on a few different panels. The reason being that it needs to be very durable and sturdy to be getting hit so much by the bikes and for us to be able to kind of screw things to it such as some of the tools that we'll be bringing along with us and parts of our plumbing system that will be mounted on the driver's side. A plastic panel wouldn't be able to hold anything. This has become so fast for you now, these panels. Oh, wait a second ago. Are we good to off? You guys might be wondering why are we painting all of a sudden and we figure for the garage this is much more like an industrial type vibe if we did fabric like we did for the rest of the van it would get really quickly damaged and look pretty bad at least if we just paint this black it's like durable you won't be able to see as many of the scuff marks and all of that so a less pretty part of the van, but I know it's going to look cool when everything's mounted to it that you won't even notice that it's just plywood with black paint. <laughs> At least that's the plan. We'll see. Flashback. These I have prepped only for the RGBs, which will be along the whole ceiling. Two different branches. It'll be the front and the back. So you can have a different mood. Beautiful LED holders created. Look at that. And now they need to be installed up there along the ceiling, covering that silver junk and giving us a proper ambiance. That's awesome. That's so cool. So, so good. Covered in fabric, LED inside. That mood lighting. The way it is, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing I need to do with this. These shapes are kind of mimicking the van's structural bump just there to keep everything flush. That looks like a really small glow. This is the, this is the obvious harsh light mm -hmm. causing us a harsh shadow and, and showing the imperfection in the line projecting it always on the ceiling and this to me is wow, like the best the most, yeah, mm -hmm, easily. because it creates the glow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's that's a good actually experiment so important proves my theory yeah 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 <laughs> It's kind of hard to tell in video, but what we're discussing is how we want the LED to sit in here so it doesn't cast a shadow. So is that straight down like this? Is that all the way here? Is that against this side of the holder? What placement will ensure the least amount of shadow? That's awesome how it just lights the ceiling, nothing else. See, wow, it is actually. It creates the shape. It depends when it's straight. It depends where I position it. I need to go all the way back. And then I'm still relying on bouncing the light. See? Uh-huh. Such a wild shape. And we need to make sure that it's upholstered in a way that it doesn't cast a shadow. And Europe is going through a heat wave right now and it is 100 degrees outside.
we're currently wrapping up season three of our van build, which has included paneling up our Ducato, dealing with the doors, the overhead, the kitchen, and so much more. Season four will be all about the furniture, and season five will be the three T's, travel, troubleshooting, and testing. That's the season I'm most excited for because we're going to be driving this thing all over Europe. So we have two of these remotes that will control either the front zone or the bedroom zone. Pretty easy how they work. You have on and off just here. You can pick your color, anything along the wheel. These two are different party modes. And then you have dimming. So either increasing the intensity or lowering it. Finally not a million degrees outside and we can show you what happened today. Oh, that looks awesome. That is a really beautiful scene. Consumption now it must be a lot. 86 watts. A lot of light. What's your favorite color so far? My favorite color is this cool color. <laughs> it's a potty. <laughs> wow. But I have this zone and that zone separate. Bedroom. So yeah, it feels like a small space, and by all these different details, you can make it feel more like. <laughs> Might be really obvious to say, but it's really stupid fun. <laughs> Look at how many colors. This is perfect for bugs. You don't want any bugs with orange. Blue, I need to work. I need to relax. I need to sleep. What is that red is sleep, I think, for the melatonin. I want a party. Off, on, no more dance. Definitely dance. <laughs> what is this? This is a for disco mania. You can see here I can dim it down. Or dim it all the way up. Ooh, that's nice. Look at that guy's face. I mean, I love a good statue, but what's he thinking about? <laughs> 